Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Deputy Director Joanna Drake and my distinguished panelists, Judith and Marco, to this last session on a vision for the future, a geological service for Europe. Many thanks to Euro Geo Server for inviting me and for organizing this fantastic birthday conference. And of course, first of all, congratulations to your 50th anniversary. My best wishes for many, many more decades to come. We will need your expertise, your dedication and your commitment to help us, politicians like me, governmental bodies, industry and also the public, very important. To understand the many aspects of geoscience is crucial for our European policies and ultimately for our future. And understanding the impact of political proposals and actions in the field of mineral resources will be more important than ever. We need much more regular and, and structured exchanges between the two worlds, I think. In my role as the European Parliament's Rapporteur on Critical Raw Materials, I'm very happy that you invited me to moderate this panel today because we are indeed urgently in need for a vision for the future. Today we have heard about our future demand in the context of the ecological and the digital transition, both globally and European. Our commitment towards energy transition and digitalization is a challenging task. The implementation of our plans on energy efficiency and renewable energy is nothing less than a game changer with regard to achieving our climate targets. Our renewable energy share in 2030 will be 45% instead of 32. The European Parliament just increased our ambition because we know that the tipping points are getting closer, so we have to increase our ambition. Our solar strategy aims to bring online our 320 gigawatt of solar volt photovoltaic newly installed by 2025, over twice today's level and almost 600 gigawatt by 2030. We will increase the binding energy efficiency target to 13% by 2030. That is an increase of four percentage points compared to the plans in 2021. For our hydrogen strategy, we have set new targets of 10 million tons of domestic renewable hydrogen production and 10 million tons of imports by 2030. And when we talk about renewable energies, about solar panels and windmills, about hydrogen electrolysis and digital energy efficiency solutions, I talk of course about precious minerals and metals, lithium, nickel, cobalt, rare earth, iridium, platinum. I have to admit my work on the critical raw materials was like a brainwash to me. I started to seeing the materials in every product. And the mobile phone no longer is just a phone, it is copper, lithium, magnesium, tungsten, cobalt and tellurium. A windmill is no longer just a windmill, it's a permanent magnet containing neodymium, dysprosium, boron and iron. Ladies and gentlemen, critical raw materials will be to a certain extent the petrol of the future and it will be important for us to ensure secure and affordable access as well as sustainable use of our resources. In her State of the Union speech, Commission President Ursula von der Leyen recently announced a Critical Raw Materials Act. In preparation for the legislation, legislation to be proposed in March next year, the EU Commission is currently publicly consulting on what we need to take care of. Parts of the consultation refer to research and innovation, monitoring, governance and coordination, as well as international partnerships. To close material loops, we need to ensure that we build up strong secondary markets with recycling being the superstar of our efforts. At the same time, we know from scientific research that recycling will only kick in in the medium to long term. So in the meantime, we need to enhance our efforts on sustainable mining, also domestically, both inside and outside the EU. We need to define our demands and needs and identify the projects in need. I wish we would learn from the energy sector. How can we prioritize these strategically relevant projects and how can we, can, can we profit from fast permitting and from access to found funding? At the same time, these projects need to showcase our technological expertise and our ability to diligently balance both the EU's increased need for sustainably sourced critical raw materials and the need to protect nature and biodiversity. 
In this context, we have the great chance to implement the Green Deal in the way it was envisaged, namely as an opportunity. An opportunity to transform the mining sector. An opportunity to lead by excellence in technology and innovation and to export this ex excellence in other parts of the world. And an opportunity to maintain and create future-proof jobs and bring value chains back to Europe. I'm sure that we will hear more about it from Judith in her intervention. Ladies and gentlemen, the starting point is far from optimal. Our dependencies from only a few countries and companies in the supply of the materials in need is putting at risk our climate agenda. Supply chain disruptions and fierce global competition provide additional pressure. We have to diversify and we have to be fast. Obviously, geoscience will play an important role in our endeavor to ensure secure and affordable supply of, ma of materials. In the action plan of the Commission, we can read about the link to the obvious Earth observation programs and remote sensing which are needed. And there will be many more other links to the work of your expert groups, mineral resources, marine geolo geology, geoheritage, water resources and international cooperation, to name just some examples. For primary materials, we need to know where the deposits are. We need to understand the quality of the ground and the rock, and we need to be best in class in extracting them in a sustainable, least invasive way. For strong secondary materials, we need to understand and manage the challenges of recycling, knowledge of material sources and flows, as well as the development of recovery processes will be key. Last but not least, we need to continue and strengthen our leadership in research and innovation. So I'm curious what Ms. Drake will tell us in a minute to the, uh, on the Commission's ambitions and visions in this field. My political group, the European People's Party, is a strong believer in science-based decision-making and technolog technological neutrality. We pushed for stocking up the budget for Horizon Europe under the current financial framework. And we believe that the envelope of 95.5 billion euro enables us to address major challenges of our times, including the climate change. We need to attract scientific excellence and the results of our R&D will give a boost to Europe's ability to innovate and develop a more prosperous and sustainable economy. This said, I would like to encourage you to follow up and implement your vision of a European geological knowledge base, because a European strategy can only work if politics, industry and geoscience work hand in hand, as I said at the beginning. I know there's lots of geoscience expertise out there in our member states. The Deutsche Rohstoffagentur in my own home country, Germany, serves as a very good example. Think about how much we can achieve if we manage to bring our national expertise together, if we break up the silos of national strategies and implementation and act in a much more coordinated and structured approach. Pulitzer Prize winner author John McPhee once said, with their four-dimensional minds and in their interdisciplinary, interdiscipli interdisciplinary ultra-verbal way, Geologists can wiggle out of almost anything. Let us prove that he is right. Thank you very much for your attention. And without further delay, I would like to hand over to Mrs. Joanna Drake, the Deputy Director of DG Research and Innovation, for her keynote.